and she had already had her mouth over my head, she would have killed me. Do something! She was looking for a death bite. <laughs> they go through bone like you and I go through a candy bar. It's everyone's worst nightmare, being eaten alive by a wild animal. In this episode, three horrific stories of people who've been attacked by predators of the African savanna. What's it like to become human prey? Conservationist Gary Kamasha was lucky to escape alive when he was savagely attacked by a lion on a game reserve. And then uh, I thought that this was it. I, I thought this, is, this would be the end. The African savanna, home to one of the most feared predators on Earth, the lion. Thousands of people have met their end in the jaws of these killer cats. This pride lives in a game reserve in South Africa's Umpumalanga province. And when food is short or they feel threatened, these big cats can turn man eaters. With lions around, no one can afford to be off guard. Danger is part of the job for 23-year-old conservationist Gary Kamasha. He manages the reserve's lions, and today he has a problem. A lioness is wounded and she's pregnant. This female, because she was injured and finding it difficult to keep up with the pride to feed and to, and to compete for food around the carcasses and things like that, she was getting very hungry. If Gary tries to treat the lioness, the pride can tear him apart. His plan, to isolate her in an enclosure by luring her in with bait. But the dominant males get to the meat first. Some are her own offspring. Days later, Gary is still waiting. He relaxes with friends and makes a dangerous mistake. I took off my sidearm and put it to the one side to just be more comfortable and uh, not thinking of anything that can happen at that point. But today will be different. The pride is staying outside the enclosure and the hungry lioness grabs the opportunity to feed. She's, she's in the closure. Gary is delighted she's finally taken the bait. Right, I'll be back in a couple of minutes. I just want to close the gate. We will, we'll... Now he can okay. treat her injury. Five minutes. Come, let's go. I basically thought, OK, this is what we've been hoping for. Let's quickly go and close the gates and make sure that she's constrained inside. But in the rush, he's forgotten the one thing that could protect him in an attack. <laughs> 150 feet from the enclosure gates, they see the pride, the lioness, 
isn't with them. There she is, behind that bush. Oh. Gary is relieved this plan is finally working. But something is wrong. She's not alone. One of the pride's aggressive young males is inside the enclosure and will attack if threatened. This male was always being a bit edgy and agitated, barking at you and coughing, the typical attack bark if you get too close to him. Getting the young lion out is dangerous, but without treatment, the lioness could die of gangrene. Gary's plan, forcing the young male out by using the truck. So uh, we went into the, the gate, and I tried to get the vehicle between the male and this female, and then push him out so that he could be running out. And once he would be outside, we could place the gates. But the young lion isn't easily intimidated. He's not leaving. Uh, I think what happened at that point, he was looking at the movement in the vehicle. So the vehicle and the people inside was posing a threat to him as well as myself. And instead of him uh, running for the gate, he was just seeing himself being crowded by this whole scenario. I was worried that he might start getting agitated, running up and down, psyching up the female as well, the rest of the pride. Forcing him out with the truck hasn't worked. All Gary can do now is try to flush the lion out himself. I'm just gonna have to go in there and chase him out. I thought I'd go on foot, use the vehicle as protection so the female couldn't really see what was going on, and then chase him out on foot. It's a risky move especially as Gary still hasn't realized he's forgotten his gun. But trying to flush a young adolescent male on foot is a big mistake. Young males tend to be the biggest Troublemakers, you know, lions are not used to being in close proximity to human beings that are not inside of a vehicle. The lion is starting to feel threatened. It could attack at any moment. I was just assuming that this male would just run out, and I wasn't even thinking of him uh, feeling a bit of discomfort. He's, I was entering his comfort zone and his, his personal space. He was essentially cornered because he was in, in a fenced-in area. So that's the time when an, an animal will react out of fear. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, boy, yeah. Instead of diverting his, his, his direction towards the gap between myself and the vehicle, he was actually zooming in on me. He was coming for me now. Hey, hey, do I did think of that point in my sidearm. This was the most stupid thing that I could have done. Uh, I don't know why I took it off. Gary tries frantically to get out of the lion's way, but it's too late. He was planning to go for my upper body. I moved back, he misjudged himself. I think that actually, to a certain extent, saved my life. The lion has missed Gary's head, but it locks its vice-like jaws around his leg. His friends, also unarmed, can only watch in horror. Gary has now become human prey. Thank you.
A lion has savagely attacked conservationist Gary Kamash. Unarmed, he must now fight for his life with his bare hands. And I had my hands trying to push his head down and away from me and, and keep him down. It was like a iron vice, a big vice just clamping around my leg. A lion's jaws can bite with nearly 900 pounds of pressure, enough to snap the spine of its prey with ease. The lion certainly was trying to control him and immobilize him and get him, get him to a point where he could access a more vital area. Outside the enclosure, the pride can smell blood. The pride with trying to figure out what's busy happening, what where did the, the sounds come from. The pride is becoming restless. If they join in the attack, Gary is finished. Frantic, he tries to pry open the lion's jaws. Well, I tried to put my thumbs into his mouth between his uh, premolars. I couldn't get him in. They were already too close to each other. I just realized there's no way so I'd be able to get my leg out of this. Gary's friend, Johan, tries to find anything he can to use as a weapon. But he comes up empty. The pride is getting agitated. They can sense a kill. Some lions are dedicated man-eaters using humans as a regular part of their diet. The hunting instinct kicks in. The attack is on. The rest of the pride was already coming in, and I shouted to my friend, uh, keep the rest of the pride away, keep the rest of the pride away. And, uh, knowing that if they would come in, it would have been the end. Keep the freaking pride away! Uh, I thought that this was it, you know. With the rest of the pride coming in to assist, I thought this, is, this would be the end. I wouldn't be able to fend off the rest of the group, so I was shouting at him, and he jumped out of the vehicle and started throwing uh, pieces of branches and, and rocks. Incredibly, Johan manages to hold the pride back. I'm coming! But Gary's leg is still locked in the lion's mouth. He needs to do something fast. Desperate, Gary attacks the lion's only weak spot, its eyes. I could just feel when I pressed my thumb into his eye that he was blinking and trying to get out. That was hurting him. The nose and the eyes are very vulnerable. That's the part of them that they have to, at all costs, protect. But the lion won't let go. It fights back with razor-sharp claws. Or not only did they, will they shred your flesh like a hot knife through butter, but uh, the infections caused by those claws are, are also very septic and can lead to rapid infection and death. A lion's claws carry deadly bacteria that can cause tumors, inflammation of the heart, and kidney failure. I still remember the sound of ripping flesh. And I could see the skin stretching, and then could feel the skin ripping. Time is running out. Oh. Johan has nothing else to throw at the lions. If the pride attacks, Gary is unlikely to escape alive. Hey, hey, hey. 
South African conservationist Gary Kamasha is being ripped apart by a lion. The rest of the pride are about to join the attack. Shoot! Hey! I can't keep them back any longer! Fearing for his life, Johan has gotten back in the vehicle. The worst moment for me, Johan shouting, uh, I can't fend him anymore, and his door closing, hearing his door banging, closing up. I realized how close I was to, um, to death. Gary struggles desperately to free himself. He punches the lion in the eye, but it won't let go. And I was just going down on his eye with my fist as hard as I could and, and putting my thumb into his eyes and pressing down. For a moment, the lion loosens its grip. Gary sees his chance and takes it. I think what he wanted to do was to reposition himself and take me down. When he started opening his mouth, I ripped my leg out of his mouth. Gary, come! Come! Come on, get in! Come, come! The rest of the pride was very psyched up. Four, five, ten seconds longer than I would have been taken and ripped apart. Adrenaline is coursing through Gary's body, numbing his pain. You need to have it checked out by a professional, okay? Only when he's safely away does he realize the severity of his wounds. When I looked down, I saw the piece of flesh hanging out the back of my leg. He ripped some of my tendons out of my arm as well, and uh, I didn't even pick up that I couldn't use my left hand properly. Let's pull over. I'll drive, OK? OK. Just pull over. OK, I'll pull over. It takes half an hour to get to the nearest hospital. On the road, um, down to the doctor, I, I remember I started feeling very awkward. I started getting a bit nauseous and, and not feeling well. So I was bleeding extensively. Gary gets more than 50 stitches in his leg and arm. He's lucky to be alive. There was a number of things that saved my life that day, and the one thing that was, was definitely was the fact that he was inexperienced and a young uh, lion. And the fact that I, I saw him coming for me and jumped backwards. Just a few weeks later, Gary returns to work on the game reserve. In the meantime, the lioness's wounds has healed naturally, and she's given birth to a healthy litter. Gary's close brush with death has made him realize that on the savanna, you can never drop your guard. I think what it did cause me is to be way more cautious than I was at that point, because I, I can remember I was getting more and more complacent of these animals. Ever since Homo sapiens first walked the African savanna, we have lived in fear of the mighty lion. These superb predators have ruled their territory for over a million years. Unarmed, humans stand little chance. Even today, more than 100 people every year are killed by lions. Humans have always been on the menu of lions throughout history you know, throughout our co-evolution with them. But lions are not the only man-eaters here. The hyena is just as deadly. It can eat every part of its victim, even the bones. Hyenas are despised because they dig up graves and eat human remains. And feared because they kill the living. In the 1950s, hyenas terrorized a village in Malawi. 
they killed and devoured 27 people, many of them children. The stealthy man-eaters crept up on villagers as they slept outdoors during hot weather. They grabbed their victims by the head and dragged them off into the bushes to feed. There was little left for devastated families to bury. Hyenas are fearless predators. In 1972, a Malawi school teacher, Yerendas Luggage, was cycling to work when he was taken down by hyenas. He knew there'd be nothing left of him if they dragged him away. He fought as hard as he could, screaming for help. By the time villagers rescued him, he was barely alive. People forget how deadly hyenas can be. Danny Tel Blanche wasn't scared of them until one tried to eat him alive. And I thought, I'm gonna die now. Spring 1998, aircraft pilot Danny Terblanche is enjoying a week's vacation with friends on the Zambezi River. Every year, the group heads off into the wilderness for a taste of adventure. All the time, there's exciting moments uh, because there's a lot of hippo, there's crocodiles, lions, and of course, hyenas. <laughs> After an action packed day on the water, the friends pull up for the evening. A ground crew has set up camp and cooked a hearty meal. We thought we had a very successful trip. So we were a very happy bunch of people. It's been great, six days. Yeah, especially when you it's the last day of the holiday. Time to celebrate. Some of my friends were wine farmers. And of course, we brought a lot of good wine with us. We heard lines every night. We knew there was quite a lot of lines, but nobody had a gun. Are you sure you're still going to sleep out here tonight? No, man. Predators are nearby, but Danny won't sleep in a tent. A big mistake. There's a recipe for hyena attacks, and the recipe would be sleeping with your door open sleeping in your sleeping bag on the ground outside of a tent. Oh, I think you're well done. I'm going to call it a night. <laughs> Good night, gentlemen. Yeah, sleep well. All right, yeah, you Cheers. too. Cheers. Good night to you. Yeah. Every night I slept outside, yes. But uh, with some protection, I had chairs around my mattress. And of course, I had a mosquito net that was hanging from a tree. But a flimsy mosquito net won't stop a hungry man-eater. These are animals that can dent a pipe, a one-inch pipe. They can crush it without hurting their teeth. At night, the hyena has a huge advantage. It can see in the dark. Hyenas, like, like all nocturnal hunters, have incredible uh, ability to see and smell at night. Night vision is excellent. <laughs> They're looking for garbage. They're looking for the things that were thrown out after dinner. And they come on to something like a person laying there sleeping. That's a carcass to a hyena. 
you are a large meal for them, they're not going to check your pulse before they go ahead and grab you. I thought somebody, they hit me with a, with a plank over my, over my head. When Danny realizes it's a hyena attack, his blood runs cold. If it drags him into the bushes, it could tear him apart in seconds. Danny Terreblanche is on a kayaking holiday on the Zambezi River when he is attacked by a hyena. I've got no weapon, and I think my way of protecting myself is to, is to pull a thick blanket over my head. It doesn't bite my head. A hyena's bite can exert a force of up to 1,000 pounds. They have particularly large teeth, premolars to crush bones, and carnations at the back of the mouth, which slice up meat like scissors. They have the strongest bite of any predator on Earth. Stronger than a lion, stronger than a bear. They go through bone like you and I go through a candy bar. I tried to, to lie on my stomach with, in a crawl position, but it was just instinct. Then it grabbed me by the, by the neck and then and dragged me. A few feet further into the bushes, and he could be ripped to pieces by the hungry hyena. He will proceed to drag you off and start eating you. That's what would happen. The hyena strategy is to, to kill you and then dismember you and then run away with whatever bits they could. Without the support of the rest of the pack, the hyena cannot fight for its meal, so it retreats. I, I felt the pain in my head, and when I felt it with my hand, I knew there was something terribly wrong. I felt a hole in my head. My biggest fear was that I'm, I lost my ear, and I'm going to lose my earring. And of course, the first thing that goes through one's mind is that I'm going to lose my, my flying career. Luckily, Danny's ear is still in one piece. Hold on, we just need to clean the ear. My ear was still in a mosquito net, hanging by a little piece of, 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 of skin from my head. I think they probably will wash it with some good old cape, dry red wine. <laughs> Desperate to save his ear, his friends bind it back onto the gaping wound. The nearest hospital is in Kariba, 80 miles across rough terrain. They need to hurry. Danny is at grave risk of a deadly infection. Hyenas eat rotting carcasses, and their mouths are crawling with dangerous bacteria. You can imagine the bumps in the road. I don't know how many times I've passed out. Adrenaline from the attack is wearing off. Danny's in shock. I prayed a lot. Okay. And I asked God to, to, to help me. And uh, that was, I think, that maybe pulled me through. It takes them nearly nine hours to reach Kariba. The town only has a small, basic hospital. The doctor does what she can to save Danny's ear. She had to... Uh to stitch it back onto my head, but there was no, no uh, anesthetics. My friends had to 
hold me on the table while she, she did the job. That was very, very painful. Danny is then flown back to South Africa, where a plastic surgeon performs three painful operations. His ear is finally restored, and he can resume his flying career. As Danny discovered, on a savanna, Homo sapiens can become just another link in the food chain. Humans aren't the usual prey for hyenas and lions. But when food is scarce, these animals will attack almost anything. In 1898, when an epidemic meant other prey was in short supply, two hungry lions launched one of the worst series of attacks ever recorded. The man-eating pair are thought to have killed more than 100 railway workers in Kenya. The lions may have begun by scavenging graves. Then, with a taste for human flesh, they began a bloody rampage that lasted nine months. Work came to a standstill. Night curfews were imposed. Workers hoped high fences and fires would keep them safe. But the lions still got in. They pulled their prey from their beds and dragged them off into the bushes to be devoured. Chief Engineer Lieutenant Colonel John Henry Patterson knew he had to kill the lions if the railway was to be built. He tried for months to catch the savage predators. Then, finally, on the night of December 9, 1898, he managed to shoot the first lion. 20 days later, he killed the second. Patterson became an instant hero. Male lions are extremely dangerous, but the lioness is just as deadly. She is a true hunter of the pride, a ruthless, efficient killer. When Bruce Meekall had to hunt a rogue lioness, he soon found out why these predators have such a terrifying reputation. She had bitten down from the top of my head, and I was fighting from my mouth. Limpopo, South Africa. This lioness is a loner. She's old and hungry. Local villagers are terrified she might start preying on their cattle or on them. The lions are usually persecuted by people because they pose a threat. Usually that threat is to their livestock, to their goats or their cattle. Professional hunters are called in to put her down. Leading the team is conservationist Bruce Meekall. He's sad to have to kill such a magnificent animal. Doing the job humanely is his top priority. It's your responsibility to make sure that things are done properly and as ethically as possible. You know, make sure that, that the animal goes down, you know, in a clean sweep. We had been notified by one of the trackers where the lioness was. So we headed up in our vehicle to that area. There's quite a few things to take into consideration when hunting a lion. Wind direction, the vegetation around you, and obviously 
the fact that you've got to have a, a you know clear vision around you. You don't want to be in really dense bush where you can end up in, in a bad situation. Bruce and his crew begin tracking the rogue lioness. So we quickly started walking, looking for signs to see where she was. Tracks, uh, old kills, things like that. But the lioness has probably already picked up the hunter's scent and keeps out of sight. Lions are very good hunters. They're very good at camouflaging themselves. For two days, they search for the big cat, but she remains invisible. The longer it takes to find her, the greater the danger to local villagers. If lions can get away with it, if they have opportunities, they consider humans part of the diet, especially in, in more harsh environments where prey density of their preferred prey is lower. Finally, they work out which way the animal is heading. If they're quick, they just might catch her. Later that morning, we had actually bumped into her, purely through tracking. That enabled us, obviously, to, to get set up uh, to take the shot. Bruce wants to take the lioness out with a single bullet. If he only wounds her, she's likely to attack. Bruce Mikal has been tracking a rogue lioness for two days. He now needs to put her down with a single bullet. The shot was a good shot. But she got up and ran off. Went into thick bush. Something has gone very wrong. The bullet hit the lioness, but hasn't killed her of the bullet hadn't done what it was supposed to do. But it opens up and, and has a hard impact um, in order to make an instant kill. In this situation, it basically just went straight through. If you didn't kill them the first time and you just wounded them and it wasn't in a, in a vital area and they survived, he would never get a chance again to catch up with them, and, and, and if you did, it would be after they killed another dozen or more people. This is hard for Bruce. What should have been a swift, humane kill has resulted in an angry, injured animal. The animal's adrenaline is up, and by walking in there immediately, you basically putting yourself into a situation where um, she's going to come out and attack you. They decide to give the lioness a chance to calm down. We head back as a safety precaution and got in our vehicles. An hour later, Bruce sets off again. He knows that he and his team are now vulnerable. The lioness is on the defensive and could strike at any moment. When a lion is badly injured, they'll retreat two or three times at the most before they'll turn and they'll and they'll attack, whether you have 100 people with you or whether it's one or two people. The lioness has the hunters in her sights. 
She waits patiently for them to come closer. Her pursuers are now her prey. The lions will cover a distance of 100 meters in about six seconds. So there's not much chance to get into any position. So you basically turn point and take your shot. By the time I reloaded to, to take the second shot, she had jumped onto me. The attack is savage. The lioness goes straight for Bruce's head. The main thing that they go for are the, is the most vital spot and the most vulnerable spot, and that's the neck and the head. As we came down towards the ground, she had already had her mouth over my head and bit me on the back of my head. With the impact of us hitting the ground, my head bounced out her mouth. To see teeth and saliva and hair and I mean the sound that they make is incredibly loud. The others can't fire. They could hit Bruce. They, they fling you around like a ragdoll. With their strength and power, every time they hit you, your whole body has been thrown about. She would have been feeling for his vertebrae so she could puncture the and sever the spinal cord. The wounded cat is in a frenzy. You don't know what's happening. You're just trying to get a grip of the whole situation around you and what to do in order to survive. The lioness is much stronger than Bruce. The moment he weakens, she will kill him. Bruce Mikal has been savagely attacked by a wounded lioness. His team can't shoot her because they might kill him. He's become human prey. Once they go into attack mode, they don't turn back. And then they're gonna press that attack until, until either you're dead or they're dead. All you're thinking about is trying to survive, trying to get yourself into a position of maybe having some a, 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 an inch of control. He must try to keep the lioness from moving long enough for his team to shoot her without hitting him. Bruce is an experienced hunter. He knows the lioness will try to gut him with her back claws. My natural instinct was to pick my legs up so she didn't disembowel me. And when she came for my face, that's when I stuck my arm in her mouth. Bruce has disabled two of her deadly weapons, her teeth and back claws. He hugs the lioness tight to immobilize her. The ordeal is finally over. But even though she nearly killed him, Bruce can't help regretting that this superb creature had to be put down. In the instance when she had died, there is... <sighs> Being so close, there is definitely a, a feeling that goes through you of what's happened to you and what's happened to her. Shock sets in quickly. Bruce needs urgent medical attention. He has torn veins and over 40 lacerations. His injuries are life-threatening. A lion's saliva carries bacteria 
which can cause terrible infection and internal bleeding. I spent five and a half hours in surgery. I came out of hospital after one and a half to two weeks. You know, then it's a long recovery, I think, from there, uh, mentally and physically. Within a couple of months, I'd healed up. I was able to use, you know, my arm again and, 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 a, and a bit of therapy that, you know, that helped. On the mental side, I think you've got to accept what's happened to you and move forward. You know, there's very few first-hand accounts like that because lions usually, when they attack like that, they usually kill their victim. Bruce is lucky to survive. Despite his close brush with death, he goes back to work as a conservation manager in a savanna. But he's given up hunting for good. It's hard to, to go back to doing what you were doing after an, an incident like that. There's definitely a sense of respect and a sense of fear. Lions and hyenas can kill a person in seconds, but attacks are rare. Normally, these predators will avoid us. It's only when food is scarce or they feel threatened that they strike. And when they do, the results are devastating. I realized how close I was to death that day. Um, I think it, it made, gave me a lot of more respect for life. It, it made me realizing that every moment, any mo moment could be your last moment. Surprisingly, many survivors don't blame the animals. I've got uh, uh, more respect for hyenas because it's an open opportunistic killer. I have more respect for, for hyena and I won't take a chance or give them a chance. My whole life I've worked in the conservation industry. And you work with dangerous game on a daily basis. So, yeah, there's, a, there's definitely a respect um, for big game, knowing their potential, but also the fact that we are in their territory. As we encroach ever further into their territory, there will still be times on the African savanna when we become human prey.